Well, hello everyone. This is Wilson Cole. I'm president of Adams, Adams and Ross and Backdoor Hiring Solutions. And I want to talk to you guys about a, uh, a unique situation. And it's not that unique, but we, we have seen it recently. And it was, I guess, the most blatant uh, example. And, you know, Samantha, our staff attorney, and I have had video discussions, which we've shared with you guys on why you want to have a signed agreement. Okay. Um, you know, it, the best analogy I can use is you can put in, on your fee agreement all that you want. If you accept somebody, uh, then you agree to our terms and conditions. And that's a good fallback position for the attorneys to argue, but it's not a replacement for that signature. Let me give you the best example that we've discussed uh, before is this prenuptial. You know, you can send over a prenuptial to your future bride or, or groom and say, hey, if you sign uh, or if you don't sign this, it's irrelevant. If you marry me tomorrow at noon, um, then you're agreeing to the terms. That prenuptial probably wouldn't hold up. And so recruiters are banking on that same argument. Um on enforcing their contracts. Now, in some states, it's a bigger deal than in others. And there again, we've done complete videos on that. But from a collection standpoint, we always come back to, well, there was a meeting of the minds. You knew our client was a uh, recruiter. They sent over the fee agreement. They put you on notice what are the fees were, or you paid them in the past, so you knew what the fees were. Uh, and so there was obviously a meeting of the minds. That's the, the collection argument that we utilize. We have recently had one of our clients turn over an account. We're still ongoing. I don't know how it's going to work out. I can tell you we're, we're in a, um, a tough position because there's not a signed agreement. There uh, is not. The client says that, and I'm, I truly believe they did discuss fees, but it was on the phone. There's no recording of that phone call. There's no email to memorialize, hey, Steve, for our conversation, uh, you know, here's Fred Smith. Our fees are 25% and things along those lines. Um, so there was no documentation that fees were even discussed. Worse yet, after the candidate was given the offer, our client provided, oh yeah, I'm not sure if we discussed this or yet. That's problematic because that, in essence, at least from the debtor's uh, attorney's argument, shows that there was no meeting of the minds. So... Number one, you really, especially as we're going into this economic climate, you, you, you need to get fees signed. Half of the agreements or half of the collections that we get in for our recruiting clients, half of them don't have signed agreements, and we're still able to collect them, but it makes it easier. But we fall back on the documentation. You need to make sure that you document where you send over the fee agreement. And when all of these backup positions, I'm not saying are as good as a signed agreement. Signed agreement's the best. But document that you discuss the fees. If you have a conversation with them on the phone, send them an email. Hey, Steve, you know, uh, you know, per our uh, conversation today, our fees are 20%, 25%. Let me know if you want me to send over you know, some resumes. If you know this fictitious Steve were to respond back, yeah, let's go ahead and see it, then our staff attorneys or our litigating attorneys could argue, and it's a little bit of a stretch, but they could argue that that was a digital signature. So documentation is key. But if you never discuss what your fees are and they never sign the agreement, you're setting yourself up for an uphill battle. You know, I'm in hopes for this specific point, we're going to be able to get it resolved, um, and what I'm also having to do is to go to our litigating attorney in that state and say, hey, here's the circumstances. What's our fallback positions? Because we've had this discussion before. What's true in Florida is not necessarily true in Massachusetts or in California or New York. Uh, and it may be some variation of that in Kentucky. So each, um, each state is slightly different. But make sure you get a signed agreement first and foremost, but also make sure that you have documentation that you have discussed those fees with your clients. Uh, and I can assure you that if that's the case, you're going to probably cut in half the number of times that you're going to have to utilize us for collections. If you do have a collection that you'd like to discuss, or if you'd like to find Backdoor Hires, uh, please visit our uh, Backdoor Hire website at backdoorhires.com, uh, and we can search for Backdoor Hires, or visit our staffingdebt.com if you'd like to speak with me or one of our staff attorneys. Hey guys, it's Wilson again, and this video was brought to you by Backdoor Hiring Solutions. And if you like the content, make sure that you click the like button. And also, if you want to receive additional 
uh, videos, then please make sure to subscribe to our channel. If you'd like to learn more about our software, uh, please visit our website at backdoorhires with an s.com. And then also, if you'd like a copy of my free book, The Top Nine Excuses, please click in the, uh, the uh, video notes below, and there's a link where you can get this book absolutely free. Just simply pay for shipping and handling. Thank you.